I think freedom of speech is so important because without freedom of speech, I would have never had a job in the first place. Because as a broadcaster, I always felt I was a little bit different um, because although I stick by the BII guidelines or the, guide, the former BII guidelines, I do believe that it's important that we hear every view. And that's why when I used to have callers on the air, even though some of their views I didn't agree with, I can be absolutely sure some of their views were racist, some of their views might have been homophobic, but without those views, we never learn. So we never move on as a society unless we hear everybody's view. It doesn't matter if we don't like it. Just because views hurt our feelings doesn't mean we should ban them. Because we have to understand why certain things hurt people's feelings or then we'll never move on as a society. So I think it's really important that everybody gets to say something. Unless, of course, they're insinuating violence against somebody. I absolutely agree you should never be allowed to do that. But we already have legislation for that, which has been there for the last 30 years and only been used 50 times, I think. so. My main concern is more so the chilling effect. It's not so much the people being arrested, because I think that's the purpose of it, that they don't, they don't want to be arresting people. But if people are going to sort of think twice about saying things or objecting to something, so, for example, if somebody's going to put something up on Twitter or social media, say with regards to being gender critical, or if it's about immigration, or I don't believe, I think we're letting too many people into the country, they might have a fear that that could be considered hate speech and they may get prosecuted. So, in other words, what they'll do is they won't actually do it. They'll stop, people will stop having opinions. As a really well-known broadcaster and journalist and radio host, have you found it difficult in terms of speaking out against this law, in terms of highlighting free speech? Uh, no, I haven't because, I, I mean, I think some journalists probably have because I've always been reasonably fearless. You know, I, I don't mind turning around and saying I don't believe a man can become a woman. That, that's just my view. People can disagree with that. They can challenge my view. But other journalists seem to be afraid to, to say that. That's why I mentioned today there was a, a good story that was covered by Gript and the Irish Mirror last week in relation to pupils and that school teacher that demanded they use the they, them pronoun. None of the other media touched the story. I think there's a problem in the media at the moment that they all feel they can't say anything because they don't want to lose their jobs or get cancelled. And generally speaking, you don't because I've been doing it for 25 years. Touch wood, I haven't been cancelled yet. It's coming, but I haven't been cancelled yet. So I, I think there's a, going back to your original question, I, I think there is a fear amongst the media to talk about certain things and that's a real problem in society. So would you say you're concerned about the direction in which the Irish media landscape is going? Yes. Do you feel yet there's a need for alternative media outlets and media that is not specifically state-funded? I know you've started your own podcast, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I think podcasting certainly go, is the way forward. But the problem now is that podcasting is also going to be governed by the new organisation because the BAI are gone. Um, they now have a new organisation which governs podcasting, social media and everything else. And of course with the new digital treaty as well, that's going to be a problem too. So podcast, they're going to try and regulate podcasting as well. Um, I hope they don't. Um, but we are going to be regulated by the very fact that they want to bring in legislation for hate speech. So if somebody comes onto my show and says something derogatory, and even if I challenge that, they still want to have that regulated. So there is a fear that they want to regulate everything. And that's a real problem in media. Um, I won't put up with it. I'm certainly not going to adhere to it. And I hope that everybody else will stand up to it too, other people in media. But I fear many of them won't. For the people out there who think that people like me who want to, or who are against this legislation, think that I want to say hateful things. I don't. I don't generally say hateful things to anybody. And hate is just an emotion anyway. Um, but I do believe, and, I, and I, I say this to everybody, hate is not a good thing. And nobody endorses violence. We already have legislation there that stops you being violent towards somebody, that stops you encouraging violence towards a community, a minority, or whatever it happens to be. So this legislation is completely unnecessary and it serves no purpose and the only purpose it serves is to take away our rights to freedom of speech which we were born with. If you have an issue with what somebody says, talk to them, debate with them, bring them on the radio, bring them on my show if you want and talk to them and tell them why you have an issue with what they said. But don't go to a Garda station. That's not how you settle a debate. What has your experience been in terms of speaking out against this? Because as you said up on the stage, you know, people even will label you far right and you say that's very far from who you are and your views. I don't believe I'm far right. I believe I'm, if you want to put a label on me, I'm right of centre, maybe because I have conservative views, but I have liberal views on things too. I voted yes to marriage equality for gay people to get married. That's not what a far right person would do. You know, I, I agree with immigration, provided it's uh, regulated and provided, for example, people have passports and documentation and provided they are coming from war-torn countries. I believe we should roll out the red carpet and support as many people as we possibly can. I just don't believe in a free-for-all. So that doesn't sound like somebody who's far-right. I'm not a far-right person. I think the words far-right 
a really easy words to use to silence somebody. Because when you say far right, they're just from the far right, it makes them feel like, seem like bad people and we should ignore them. So I think it's just another form of censorship to label people. Because if that was the case, why is far left such a compliment?